Well, hey, CrossCart fans. Uh, so I just took this out on a track day, which was an absolute blast. So I'm gonna run through some details of that. And I'm also gonna show you guys what I did to convert this back into a cable clutch. Now in my build videos, I made this into a hydraulic clutch and I bought this whole setup master cylinder. Uh, this piece is, it, it's Chinese. <laughs> so it failed, uh, it locked up, uh, we disassembled it, we cleaned it up and we got it working again, but when I put it back in, it was just never right. Uh, something happens with the rod and this sleeve that makes it start dragging. So you push the clutch in and this doesn't return. It's super annoying. Uh, it worked well when it was working. And if you just had a, a system of replacing this once a year, just automatically, you'd be all right. But cable is mechanical and I like mechanical because once you set it up, it's perfect. Now, the reason this failed is because I soldered a barrel nut onto the end of the cable like you're supposed to, but this doesn't call for a barrel nut. It calls for a ball nut. So I took my angle iron and I ground it into a ball. And I believe in that process, I weakened the solder in there. Now I did that like the day before track day. So I didn't have time to test it out and obviously it was uh, bound to fail and unfortunately it just failed right at the track. So while repairing this, I'm going to show you how to make your cable clutch work on your cross cart so you don't have to run your crappy slave cylinder. Let's get to it. All right, so here's what we're working with. Now it's pretty simple how this works. Um, inside of here, there is a cam. Uh, the cable runs through here, hooks up to this, and when you pull it, it pushes a rod which disengages your clutch. When you let off the clutch, it pulls that cam back down via this spring, and you have full clutch engagement. Now you can see here, there's my cable, and you can see the ball is missing. Now, when picking a clutch cable, make sure you get one that has some kind of adjustment. Uh, this is threaded and it is a similar diameter to the punch through hole. So all I did was tap, drill and tap. I didn't have to drill, I just tapped it. And then I have adjustment for the cable length. So let's undo that so we don't lose our cable in there. Now, the reason that this is a ball nut and not a barrel nut is because it has to fit through that hole in our housing. It's slightly annoying, but it's an easy workaround. So let's find a way to make a ball nut for this. All right, so before we get into the back end, let me show you the front end. Uh, you can see that the master cylinder is still hooked up. There is no reservoir in it and it is empty. That is sheerly just to have a stopping point in the back and to line up my pedals. With this loose cable, this just runs free. Uh, there's probably another method to do that, but I had the master cylinder, so I just used it. Now I used the connection point for the master cylinder and just ran a longer bolt through it. I put a heim on it. I drilled a hole through it the same diameter as the cable, ran it through sideways, and then I'm using a bolt to hold that in place. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it, but that's what I had available to me, so I used it. I made up this little bracket. I've got my keeper for it right here. Uh, it's adjustable on the back end. Uh, if you wanted to be super slick, you could make it adjustable here and at the back. I have the cable running out of the way. Uh, that bracket's kind of tucked behind C14 there, so it's not in the way at all. Uh, the cable runs beside the pedal. So nothing's in the way. Uh, it was very, very smooth. So that's the front end. Now I'm gonna take this cable loose so I can cut the back side off. Now you can see I left all the slack in uh, cause I didn't know what was coming next. And now I'm prepared for this exact situation.
So the throttle and cable kits I buy, I buy them as a shop pack, which means they come with all of these little accessories. You can see that there are barrel nuts, there's end keepers, there's chain or cable tensioners. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here. So what I'm gonna go with, um, this barrel nut will not fit through that hole in the cover, but this end keeper will. But the cable's too big for it. So I'm gonna drill out this hole, slide it up onto some fresh cable, and look at how nice that's gonna be. It's gonna be super sturdy. Um, either solder it, but I think I might weld it. This is, I'm gonna test weld to see if it'll stick, see if this is aluminum or stainless or what. I'm pretty sure it's stainless. So we can pull up a whole big bunch of weld right in there. And this will be good forever. So some of you probably already knew that that was brass, probably a nickel coated brass, but look at all that weld we got on the cable. And that's the important part. Um, the brass piece is just for uh, connecting to the other side of that, that clutch bracket holder. So as long as we have something strong on the back side, the cable's not gonna pop out. There's probably a million ways to do this. There's swedges, there's soldering, obviously. There's making your own, drilling out a piece of plywood and filling it with solder in a ball shape. Uh, this took literally three minutes. So I'm not unhappy with it at all. Uh, just gonna clean up some of this weld. Uh, I've already yanked on it a few times. It is absolutely solid. And I actually could not say that about the one I did prior, so. We're in good shape. Let's get it installed, work on calibration. All right, so now that our piece is all trimmed up, I just used the end itself as a template. Let's test fit it. It's right in there. Oh man, that's nice. That is very, very nice. Now to start off the calibration stuff, I like to run this a little bit deep. That way I have plenty of adjustment on the top side. Um, when you cinch a cable in a barrel nut, typically it needs to be tighter. So I will leave room to shorten the cable, making the, the pull tighter. Let's see how it goes into our little bracket. There we go. Look at how nicely that fits. Look at that, that's super solid. We'll just take our bracket. All right, so let's look under the hood. I've got that piece all in place. Let me take a look under here, check your angle. Yeah, you got nothing there. So here's my hind joint coming off right here. Um, you can see why I use the master cylinder. Uh, it holds this pedal nicely in place in the forward position. Since it's a cable, this would just flop forward without it. Um, there is a stop adjustment. Now this is an important part of tuning this. So we'll crack that loose, but first we're going to pre-tension the cable. And for that, I'm just going to grab it. Goody. Now, I know you're gonna say there's a better way of doing this. I agree. This is just what I had available in my shop so it's what i used and it works great so no regrets all right so now calibration time the spring is just very 
very slightly open, right? So that means this is at the start of getting ready to engage. So now I'm gonna push the clutch pedal and you can see when I pull that, engages that cam. Now the stop on the clutch is so that we don't bury this into the bracket. Pulling this cable to its length is going to stress out that ball. That could have been what happened on track day, but we'll never know. And we're, we're driving on anyway. So we have our adjustment here to either make this longer in case we're engaging too early or pull it out to engage it later. Either way, you want a full stroke. All right, so now before I put this back in, I'm going to adjust this to where that spring is completely closed. If this doesn't go all the way down, your clutch won't engage fully and it'll, you'll just be driving around with it slipping. All right, so now it is time to test your initial calibration. One of two things are gonna happen. Uh, one, your clutch isn't gonna be fully engaged when the pedal is out, which means it'll slip. You'll go to drive it, the engine will rev, but it won't go forward, it'll just creep. Number two, the clutch won't fully disengage, which means you push the clutch, it still wants to go. So an initial test that I do is I put it up on jack stands. I'll start it up. Now that it's running, we can push in the clutch and put it in first. Now the wheels are going to move, all right? So now you gotta find a way to push the clutch and make sure the wheels are disengaging. Right now, I, I can't stop these. It's in first gear and it's just idle and it's going. So, monkey around, push the clutch. See, it's still engaging. The clutch is still engaged with it pushed in. So, we need to move our stop. So we need to adjust the clutch stop position. We need more throw. Alternatively, we could tighten that back, but you don't wanna mess with that one too much because that's where the business is happening. So now, there's really only one thing left to do, and it just happens to be one of my favorite parts. We gotta test it. Nice. Now, what I'm noticing is that the clutch is all the way at the bottom. As soon as you move the pedal, it is engaging. I don't like that, so we need to add a little bit of slack, if you will. All right, so this is where this handy dandy adjuster comes into play. Now, I'm sure I could figure up the ratio of how many turns to how many decimals of an inch uh, each turn is worth and compare that to how much pedal throw I want. But all I need to know from that test drive is that the cable shroud needs to be shorter. The first, I don't know, four inches of pedal are doing nothing. So basically I need to either readjust the cable in my heim joint or make this longer. Now you can play with all three of your adjustments, those three being the cable itself in the heim joint uh, barrel nut contraption. Uh, it is right here at this adjustable point. And your third adjustment is your clutch stop on your pedal box. If I adjust this outside the parameters of that push rod for the clutch, then I'm going to ruin the clutch. I'm going to overstroke it, which is why that clutch stop is so important. So just keep messing with those three adjustments until you get it exactly how you want it and it will drive amazingly. When this was working, it was fantastic.
Even that short drive, like it was acceptable. But I go for more than acceptable. I go for exactly how I want it. And this should be it. Now I realize that I'm using a camera and since I don't have a second person here, I can just film my adjustments. Come up here, press the clutch pedal and see exactly what it's doing. Do that a couple times. Do a fast one just to see how it's releasing. Then review the footage. Pretty slick. Well, that's it. Uh, it was pretty easy, pretty simple, and I was really excited to share it with you guys because the hydraulic setup, even though it's uh, smooth and buttery, it's not it's not resilient, uh, apparently. So this clutch cable setup, easily adjustable, strong, mechanical. So once it's set up, it's set up. The calibration, if you've got two people, it's a lot easier, but I just showed you you can do it by yourself. And that's it. Now, I don't really ask you guys to like videos, but nobody's gonna see this stuff if you don't like the video. Uh, YouTube weirdness makes people like videos for it to get seen, and I don't really ask you guys for that because this is for you. Uh, all this stuff is for you guys. I love all the builds, I love the community. You guys are awesome, and I can't thank you enough for joining in on this awesome adventure of cross karting. I officially have a race car sitting in my garage. <laughs> I hope you guys will someday as well. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.